How you doing? How's everybody doing? And we're here. Right on time. 8 p.m. sharp. How you doing, Bobby? Hey, I'm going to throw some numbers at you because I know you got great memory. 37, 96, 31, 13, 9, 7, 5, 19, 95, 2001. I'll see you, brother, because I know you remember. How you doing, Ludi? How's everybody doing? One second, please. I just wanna, just wanna share this. You know what I'm saying? I wanna share this. Oof. Got fuerte la situación aquí en Puerto Rico, boy. Trust me when I tell you, it's crazy, it's hectic. All that snow. Um, muy buenas noches a todos, todas, todes. You know, that's how we do it. So tonight. <clears throat> We got, we gonna start off in English, but give me a second. Entonces, mi gente, antes que nada, tenemos que darle la gracia a Dios que un día más de, de estar acá en el planeta Tierra, ¿no? <coughs> un saludo y un abrazo muy especial a la familia Montalvo. Lenda, en paz descanse. Tremenda, tremenda persona, excelente ser humano, excelente amiga, excelente madre, tía, excelente todo, pero yo la conocí como amiga. Um, más sincero pésame para su familia. Pero te amo y está de luto, man. Esa señora, esa señora vale oro, más que oro. You gotta work on the lighting, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Entonces, como nosotros empezamos la otra vez, en castellano, vamos a empezar hoy en inglés. ¿verdad? Vamos a hablar de las prioridades. So, give me a second. Hoy vamos a hablar de prioridades. Vamos a hablar de lo ético, ¿verdad? Vamos a hablar de la incompetencia. Vamos a hablar de el poco sentido común. Tacto, no hay tacto. Y vamos a hablar de la gente que quieren o intentan coartar la libertad de expresión. ¿Oíste, chinola? Papi, me pongo para ese número de una vez, esto me aviso. Um, <coughs> vengo ahora. Guys, so tonight we're going to speak about priorities. Jesus Christ. Priorities. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. We will be speaking about ethics. We will be speaking about ethics. We will be speaking on them. The groundhog. Yeah, we got to talk about the groundhog. Oh, we're going we're gonna to talk about Mr. Dingleberries. Hold on a second. Anyway, she's in the cystic magic now. First of all, Let's talk about priorities. I want to say what's up to uh, Margaret, Nanny, Bobby, Brandon, just everybody. Everybody who's here. By the way, King Leonidas and the 300 Brechadores are in the building. King, let me repeat to you. King Leonidas and the 300 Brechadores are are in the building. Make no mistake about it. Thank you. Let me ever share this. You have to share this. This is how we get the message across. This is how we inform people. You understand me? It's not just about being funny. It's not just about giving you the facts. It's about spreading the message. Yeah, we got to wake up one person at a time. So they got to start thinking, you know, outside the box. So they don't buy the narrative, the bullcrap that they're trying to throw at us over here. So anyway, 
Let's talk about priorities. It's been a year now. Over a year. We've had uh, Mr. Hellman Kaba as the as the mayor. As the mayor, right? And this year, during his year, during his year, I'm sorry, we have experienced some of the following things. Shootings by La Asuncion, right? Shooting, I think that was uh, down there on Gordon Street. Armed robberies. Armed robberies. Hey, family dollar. You understand me? Family dollar. Santa Maria Pharmacy, Hall Ave, and Amboy Avenue. Santa Maria Pharmacy, held up at gunpoint. We've had a police chase. We've had COVID-19. COVID-19. Right? So, during all of this, during all of this, not once has the mayor, right, the incompetent one, not once, has a Helmut Kaba came out publicly. He's never done a, a state address of the city. All he did was put a little a bullshit press release. Him and the incompetent public information officer that he has, which, by the way, doesn't know the difference between an advisory and a warning. It's not just her. It's just the whole team, right? But this past Wednesday, I come to the office. Hey, hey, look at my girl over there. Don't be looking at her too much. I come to my office. Something said, you know what? He might show up. Let me put on the Zoom. And here he is. You know, see that? Shiny bald head of this, which I'm not making fun of it. I'm just saying shiny, shiny baldy. And he's there lobbying for the Dominican festival. Lobbying for the Dominican festival. Him as well as uh, as other people, right? But I don't care about other people. I could care less if Irvin was there, if Furman was there, if anybody else was there. The simple fact that the groundhog actually showed up last year, like every year, and Hellman didn't show up last year and showed up this year, not for the right reasons, but to defend, to lobby, to ask for a festival. By the way, I am Dominican, 100% Dominican, very proud of it. You understand me? It's just that on my side of the community, we think different. So this is what I'm talking about in terms of priorities. Sir, the bullshit task force that you put that you created uh, when you came in. I did an Oprah. I didn't get anything. All I got was a bunch of names. I'm still going to do the Oprah again. A bunch of names. You haven't done anything. And you got to be careful, Diane Roman, because I know you had a call the other day and you were talking and all you were, you were, you guys all were talking about was COVID-19. That had not, nothing to do with the task force. Don't play with me. Understand me. Anyway, that banner is coming in soon. Oh, man, I'll see you at the circle. Anyway, so now, here is Mr. Helmut Kaba lobbying, defending the right of the Dominican people to have a, a festival because it's, it's cultural. It's cultural. First of all, sir, let me explain some. Let me dissect that whole synopsis, bullshit synopsis that you guys have. It is not a cultural thing. 
You understand me? It's nothing but a three-day concert event. Because in order for it to be cultural, you would have to, uh, let me see, you would have to have a program in which you explain year after year how merengue that belongs to us, right? Merengue, an art form, a dance, how bachata came to be. And you would grab, I don't know, a dance academy, and they can actually come and dance folkloric music such as mangulina. You understand me? You would, if it's cultural, you would speak about Dominican Republic and the history and, and, and what we've done here in the city, for the city, not just for Pertambo. Because if you go, if you go to, if you go to uh, New York City, one of the first uh, immigrants that came here was Dominican, one of the first immigrant families. So, you know, don't try to sell it like it's cultural because it's not cultural. And we can debate this all you want. Now, I find it, I find it funny that you can come up uh, before the council, which, by the way, hold on a sec. Oh, we want to talk about the Otomodade. Yeah, we want to talk about the incompetent uh, country woman, Otomodade, and her, and her incompetent uh, uh, buddy of her husband, Miguelito Morales. Yeah. Um, you came before the council on record to defend the Dominican festival, but yet I am on update number 24, update 24 of COVID-19. Not once in over a year have you came out and addressed the COVID-19 issue. You haven't spoken about Omicron. You haven't spoken about Delta. You haven't spoken about shit. I'm not apologizing. You know, because that's the problem, Hellman. You drink your own Kool-Aid. You believe your own thing. And the crazy part is you got a bunch of ignorant people around you that believe the bullshit that you put out. You understand me? And that's the reason why I am offended by you. I still have respect for you. There's only one person, and I'm going to mention him later on. There's only one person that I have no respect for in the city. You're not that person. So... How dare you get up there, defend the right to a Dominican festival, which, by the way, is just a party, right? Where well, you're going to bring in over 5,000 people, right? 5,000 people per day, maybe even more, because I guarantee you 50% of them ain't even from Pertan, boy. We don't have enough officers. Hold on a second. We're going to have to talk about that guy that I don't respect. Hold on. We don't have enough officers. People are dying due to COVID. Hey, you know, just in case, because I, I got a couple of boys that, you know, they don't believe in COVID-19, but I'm going to say this. Right now, John Doe, right? If I shoot you with my 45, I get, I don't know. It depends. First degree, second, third, I don't know. But, you know, I, I'm the one that shot you. But was I the one that killed you? It wasn't I that killed you. I shot you. You died. The bullet killed you. You understand me? I got I to got, I explain it this way. Because, you know, there's a couple of nutcases around that don't get it. If I shoot you, John Doe, I am not the bullet. I just pulled the trigger. I can be held for accessory to, to homicide or involuntary homicide or manslaughter, whatever the hell you want to call it. But was I the one that killed you? No. It was the bullet. It was the bullet, not the gun. The gun did its part, but it was the bullet that got to you, right? And that's the thing that you guys don't see. So if you if you tell me you don't believe in COVID nineteen, I, I don't give a shit. That's that's your opinion. I respect it. I've had people within the family, right, that passed. 
about a week and a half ago. COVID-19. So you want to bring in 5,000 people a day, Mr. Incompetent. You, the same guy that was off, took a vacation day, or a couple of, went on vacation the 27th of December. Mind you, you went on vacation twice, if I'm not mistaken, but never once. Be, hey, now that I'm talking about it, hey, shit. You guys want to change. The only time I recall baby girl, better known as Mayor Will the Diaz, leaving was when her father, may he rest in peace, was taken to Puerto Rico to be buried over there. That was the only time. Oh, and by the way, and she kept updating everybody every day. You know what I'm saying? So that's the change you guys want. Change for the worst. But let's keep going, Mr. Hellman. So um, you want to lobby for, for the Dominican Festival, and I get it. And I just want to explain this to people out here in La La Land. The reason why Hellman is advocating for the Dominican Festival is because he's trying to save face, to hold on to the insignificant, microscopic Dominican constituency he has now. Because he, he can't connect. And people are starting to wake up and smell the coffee. Now, hold on a second, because I ain't done yet. This is getting better. Dame un segundo, mi gente. Do I have something against the Dominican Festival? I have nothing against it. Hey, you want to smoke your hookah? You want to do whatever it is you want to do? You want to dance? You want to do dembo? You want to do bachata? You know, go flat bachata? That's your problem. That's your prerogative. I don't go to none of that. But, um, Selling it like it's a cultural thing. You'd have to be real ignorant to buy that. Real ig- In order for that Dominican festival to be cultural, there's a lot of tweaking you have to do to it to call it cultural. To fit on that ca- category. Category. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> so, Mr. Hellman. You go and you're defending the Dominican Festival. Okay. Here comes the leader of the great uh, incompetent administration defending a, a Dominican Festival. My, my question was, how come you didn't get up there last year and defend it or called out the Puerto Rican Festival organization so they could have their, their, their festival? See, Helmet, this is the problem. And you could... You could go back. You know, I never delete the lot. Hellman, I spoke a couple of months back last year about the divide that we've had and that I grew up with in my early teenage years where you would hear like stupid and ignorant Dominicans and Puerto Ricans go back and forth, not liking each other or whatever it was. Guess what, Hellman? There are still remnants of that ignorance. And you know what you did? You just added more fuel to that little to, to that little old puppy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hellman, the way the cookie crumbled that night was not the way you were expecting it to. You looked weak. You looked unprepared, unfit, unqualified, incompetent as fuck, and inept. You should have gotten up for all the wrong reasons. You put a festival before the city. God damn, Helmet, I'm trying to give, I'm over here trying to give you like your space and shit. And I see you trying to do your little live and shit, trying to show people you're doing something, which by the way, you totally suck at it. You know what I mean? Bring the other guy. Uh, you got to go bring that guy. Bring somebody else. But Helmet, do you know how weak you looked? Helmet, even though people that ran with you, voted against it, except Ruth Morales, Ruth Morales, because, you know, my name is Ruth Morales. I'm not really old, old, but I don't 
you know, I just got to do what, what they say they want me to do because, you know, my husband needs me to go more drivers. The guy that's a bully. Yeah, the guy that's a bully, that guy that be bullying people, you know? And, uh, and since he got a little leeway with the, the incompetent OEM director, the sorry excuse for acting chief of police, that's why she voted yes. So now, hold on a second, because I heard the, I heard I heard my friend say that even o, well I don't know if he was him or it was that OEM had cleared the festival. So you have to understand one thing, Hellman. I am not as incompetent and as ignorant as you and your people are, uh, uh, Hellman. Hellman, of course, Larry. The incompetent mayoral ass kissing machine, better known as Mr. Dingleberries, of course he's going to say yes to the Dominican Festival, Larry. I mean, Hellman. Because Larry will do anything you ask him to, Hellman. He is the OEM director. He's not going to go against the Dominican, especially since he's very close at being made chief, Hellman. Your incompetent ass might probably make him chief. You understand me? So now, Hellman, do you think Larry's going to go against you when he's trying to be made chief? When he undermined you and brought in the chief of police from Sarahville, the one from East Brunswick, North Brunswick, it doesn't matter. And calling the chief's association and shit, calling you every day so he could be made chief. He, public announcement. Damn it, I said public announcement. The only person in the history of Perth Tamboy that will never have my respect is Lawrence freaking Catano. Lawrence Catano has no res- gets no respect from me because he stands for nothing. You understand me? Only for himself. So now, let's keep going, Hellman. Hellman, so you could get up there and t- you, you didn't just get up once. You got up twice, my boy. Defending the the Dominican Festival, but I have a question, Helmet. Helmet, what the hell happened when um? Give me one second, man. What the hell happened, Helmet? When all them cases in December, when everything spiked up, and you were nowhere around. How come the incompetent OEM director never showed face either? That's the that's the, that's the question, Helmet. You understand me? So another thing that I don't understand is everything else is more important than the city and the well-being of the city. Okay, so you want to come and you want to give me the math and you want to give me whatever it is and and that you need X amount of time to plan ahead and all this crap and that oh and that you can have a vaccination thing over there at the festival. How can you keep all, all of that under control? Hellman, did you forget that marijuana, marijuana is legal, Hellman? Do you, do, do you remember, Hellman? It's legal. So if it's legal, now it's an issue of security. Because now we're not only going to be worried about the alcohol. We got to worry about marijuana and the kids. You understand me? We got to worry about, you know, things don't forget. There's one thing I know you know about. We know. We know the streets never forget, man. So, you know, there was a couple of shootings last year. And you, as the police director, the incompetent police director, never showed face either. But now you decide to show face. Because, you know, apparently the Dominicans are the ones that are going to are going to keep you there. The Dominicans are the ones that are going to keep you or keep me from recalling your incompetent ass. Apparently, the insignificant. The insignificant side of the Dominicans, because I don't believe that. That you don't even have 50 percent of the Dominican community behind you. We are smart. We are eloquent. We are hardworking. I'm not saying you're not, but we are attentive. You understand me? Okay. So Larry Catano, Larry Catano, Larry Catano is the guy, you know, with the glasses and shit. 
You know, he speaks like this. You know what I'm saying? Yes, as the mayor said, as the oh, shut your mouth, Larry. Brush your teeth. Floss your teeth. Have a couple of dingleberries there. Just an ass of shit. Anyway, you think these people care? You think these people care? Hey, hold on a second. I'll be back. I got got to explain it to the to my fellow Spanish Castellano speaking people. You know what I'm saying? So, mi gente, estamos hablando aquí de las prioridades. De las prioridades. La marmota, como todos los años, sale en primavera. Perdón. Bueno, sí, sale a anunciar la primavera. Si el invierno va a durar mucho, si se va a retrasar. Esa es la marmota. Nosotros tenemos una marmota incompetente de, 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 de alcalde que para lo único que salió en más de un año públicamente a apoyar, a defender, fue el Festival Dominicano. El Festival Dominicano. Y me molesta y me ofende. Cada vez que dicen, no, porque es algo cultural. Un cultural de un coño. Eso no es cultural coño. ¿Oíste? Porque para ser cultural tenemos que tener un programa que... Okay. Una pregunta, mi amor. Y eso, que yo no, soy, yo no estoy en contra del festival en sí, ¿eh? Por mí el que quiera fumar, que quiera bailar, que quiera beber, que quiera gozar, brincar, eso es un problema de ustedes. No tengo problema con eso. Pero mi problema es el siguiente. En un año... Y ya un mes de Germín Cava tomar posición como el alcaide, el primer alcaide dominicano de la ciudad de la historia. Ay, Dios mío. Ok. En ningún momento se pronunció sobre nada. Eh, de forma pública. Pero él tuvo el tupé, la cachaza, los cojones. No, los cojones no, discúlpame. La desfachatez, cojones ahí no, no, no. La desfachatez. De pararse en el Consejo Municipal a defender el Festival Dominicano. Primero, Germán, esto va para ti, para los tigres que estaban ahí, de tu administración. Para el Festival Dominicano ser algo cultural, el programa no debe ser solamente de fulano sale, fulano entra, va a tocar Fulano va a estar en el quinto y todo el mundo. No, 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 no. Se tiene que explicar la historia del folclore dominicano. Vamos a hablar, por ejemplo, ya que vamos a tener par de embajadores de diferentes géneros autóctonos de la República Dominicana. Mierda, se te funde el cerebro. ¿Cómo el merengue? ¿Cómo empezó el merengue? ¿Cuál es la historia del merengue? Entonces, para hablar del merengue, Necesariamente tienes que hablar de la época de Trujillo, Rafael León y las Trujillo. El sátrapa, el dictador, como tú quieras decirle. Tienes que exponer, papi. Tienen que articular. También se tiene que educar a las personas el impacto sociocultural que se vivió en la época de cuando el merengue llegó a los salones de la de la oligarquía dominicana de esas sombras palaciegas de los burgueses dominicanos de esos eh, apellidos sonoros de allá al igual que la bachata pero eso no te lo ponen ahí vamos a, por ejemplo tienes que traer una una academia de danza folclórica dominicana. Vamos a bailar la mangulina. ¿Verdad? Vamos a hablar, por ejemplo, porque es algo dominicano, ¿verdad? Vamos, coño, vamos a resaltar la importancia de Eugenio Perdomo, que lo he mencionado aquí. Eugenio Perdomo. Vamos a hablar de la literatura dominicana, de los poetas dominicanos. Sí, porque es, es algo, tú me entiendes, es cultural. Vamos a hablar de, de Vidó, excelente pintor. Vamos a hablar de todo eso. Vamos a hablar de la importancia de nuestra bandera. ¿Y cómo es que la República Dominicana tiene una bandera tan chula que es la única que tiene una Biblia? Y que te expliquen en qué el Salmo está, en qué página está, y por qué llegó ahí. ¿Tú me entiendes? 
Pero eso no es lo que hacen ahí. Ahí hacen fiesta. Por eso es una fiesta. Yo no estoy en contra de eso. El que quiera ver a Toño, quiera ver a toda esa gente, yo no tengo problema con eso. Pero escucha cuál es el problema mío. El problema mío es cuando tú crees que uno es un soquete. Que tú te paras ahí. Como un, como un gallito de pelea. A defender un festival en medio de una pandemia. Germen, a ti se te olvida, mira, que durante un año y pico, tú tienes más de un año ahí, como hay, como hay caire, en ningún momento que a la vez eres el director de la policía, te has pronunciado en ninguno de los, de los casos violentos, de los hechos violentos de acá. En ningún momento, y mira, no vamos a hablar de la violencia, en ningún momento te has pronunciado tú con nada que tenga que ver con el distrito escolar. Recuerda que los niños también forman parte de esta, de esta comunidad. Son el presente de hoy y el futuro de mañana. Y tenemos que velar por ellos. Y tú, como ese cuasi pseudo líder, ¿verdad? Ese falso profeta. Tú estás llamado a defender y a abogar por ellos. En ningún momento tú te has pronunciado sobre el incompetente superintendente que tiene un asistente, que el asistente tiene otro asistente y el otro asistente tiene otro asistente, que no sirve ni para un coño tampoco. ¿Eh? Y tú llegaste politicando, sí, porque tú pusiste que toda la gente que estaba contigo en, en, en la boleta tuya para la Junta Escolar, todos votaron que sí, para la renovación de su fucking contrato. Me importa un coño. ¿Oíste? Porque así es que tú entiendes, así es que ustedes entienden cuando se le habla así. Pero para ustedes los mediocres, señores, mire, recuerden esta frase mía, ¿eh? Nada es imposible en la mente del mediocre. Nada es imposible. Todo es alcanzable. Entonces, Helmen, aparte que no tenemos estacionamiento, aparte que tenemos, déjame ver, el foco del COVID-19 ha sido por Tambor. Tú me buscas una ciudad geográficamente similar de la misma de las mismas dimensiones de Puerto Amboy, con la población de Puerto Amboy, que tenga más casos que esta. No la hay. No la hay. Y en ningún momento tú te has pronunciado. Tú sales con tu videito. <risa> y quiero darle las gracias a, 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 a ese gesto, por los juguetes, por la... como que tú hiciste algo. Esa es la irresponsabilidad, hombre. Entonces, el problema mío, lo que me ofende, es que tú entiendes, o ustedes, tu equipo entiende, que todo el mundo aquí es inepto, todo el mundo aquí es estúpido, ignorante, como que todo el mundo aquí como que se va a comer lo que ustedes venden. No, no, esa de la que pica el pollo, ¿cómo hacen ustedes? Yo no, yo, yo no como eso. Vamos a seguir hablando del Festival Dominicano. Tú te paraste ahí a defender el festival. Oye, grábense esta vaina, yo no estoy en contra del festival, ¿eh? Ahora, si fuese por mí, no se diera este año. Si fuese por mí. Pero ya eso es un problema. Sí, si pues esa, es esa es la diferencia entre nos. Yo lo digo de forma pública. Para mi puerto coño. Yo soy autónomo. Eh, Tú te paras a defender eso en el Consejo Municipal, y te viste débil, derrotado, falsa de tacto, sentido común, no pudiste articular, no pudiste, coño, una pésima oratoria, pes, pes, pesísimo, si se puede decir así, me da la gana de decir así, pesísimo, o sea, pésimo argumento. Eh, y yo entiendo por qué, porque lo que sucede es que tú, Andas buscando el apoyo. No quieres perder ya más apoyo lo que has perdido dentro de la comunidad dominicana. Principalmente dentro de la clase pensante de los dominicanos. ¿Verdad? Helmen. Cuando yo llegué acá, porque tú llegaste primero que yo. Llegaste como de seis años, yo llegué de diez. Dame hacerte una, una historia pequeña. Cuando yo llegué acá, en el 94, 90, 94. Yo recuerdo que en la escuela y en la calle 
usted escuchaba eso, ¿no? Que los boricos contra los dominicanos, que si los mexicanos, váyanse al coño todos. A mí me importa un coño que si el borico, que si los... a mí no me importa nada de eso. Pero todavía quedan remanentes de esa gente ignorante, abyecta, ignominiosa, burda, tosca, ridícula, payasa y estúpida, pero sumamente imbécil a la vez. Que no quieren saber de ti porque tú eres dominicano, no quieren saber de ti porque tú eres boricua, que no. Bueno, esa es la ignorancia. Entonces, ¿qué pasa? Al momento de tú pararte ahí, ¿verdad? En ese foro abierto, ¿verdad? Tú le echaste más mierda a ese problema que todavía está ahí. Porque todavía hay gente que piensa así acá. Y adivina que se ve como que tú estás parcializado. Aunque yo entiendo que no. Tú ves, porque esa es la diferencia entre tú y yo. Entre ustedes y yo, más bien. Yo sé que, por ejemplo, Jaime Cava no tiene nada en contra de los boricuas. Eso lo sé yo. Pero mi pregunta es para que tú veas la, la, lo irresponsable que tú eres. Y, el, y la falta de tacto y sentido común que tiene Jaime. Jaime, tú te paraste hace el año pasado a, 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 a exigir, a defender a decirle al, al a la organización del festival puertorriqueño acá que no que tenían que ser los grandes en Rudy Park como siempre lo hacen o por qué cuando tú agarraste y te paraste ahí no dijiste tú sabes qué y yo creo también que, la, que, que el comité del festival puertorriqueño también lo hagan grande como todos los años papi papi tú, pues tú tienes que gobernar para todo el mundo o sea gobernar no tú no gobiernas tú tienes que administrar para todo el mundo pero no lo haces. Entonces, esa pequeña pugna obsoleta que todavía vive por ahí, subyace por ahí, eso tú lo único que fue que le echaste más combustible. O sea, échate más leña al fuego, papi. Y adivina qué. ¿Tú crees que con eso dominicano que tú estás ahí, ¿verdad? En... En cuanto al Festival Dominicano, ¿tú crees que con ellos que tú vas a ganar? ¿Tú crees que con ellos que tú me vas a ganar el rico a mí? Tú estás equivocado. Es lo mismo que tú eres el presidente de, 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 de la organización del Partido Demócrata acá. O sea, eso quiere decir que tú no haces nada para los republicanos. Porque no es verdad que si te vas a una línea del partido, tú no la vas a acatar. Entonces, esas son las cosas. Hey, Héctor Cava, ¿cómo tú estás? Bendiciones. Para ti y para tu familia, papi. Sabes que te aprecio. Entonces, ¿qué sucede, Herbie? Esas son las cosas que tú tienes que saber. ¿Verdad? Entonces, Helmin en un año y pico no sale, pero sale para el Festival Dominicano. Oye, Helmin, aquí hace falta policía. El hospital estaba que ni daba abasto, que todavía no creo que dé abasto con la cuestión de, 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 del COVID-19. En ningún momento tú saliste de forma pública a dar la cara cuando el, el, la cuestión de la bicicleta, ¿verdad? Pues está, pues, la ciudad más racista de, de la nación durante esa semana. Pero tú sales para un maldito festival. Me vale un coño para lo que tú saliste y me vale un coño también el festival. Esa es mi opinión. Y si al que no le gusta que se tire del puente, pues eso, eso es un problema de ustedes. Entonces, esa es la prioridad del señor Germín Cava. Esto va para ti, mi amor. Para ti, que votaste por él. Porque él representaba el cambio, la, la, la visión 2020. Para ti, que votaste por el primer dominicano en la historia. Chúpate el cambio. Chúpatelo entero suculento, chúpatelo, pero con pila de diarrea crónica y hemorroides, por abusador y fatal, por ayudar a, lleg a que llegara aquí esta, esta, esta administración tan azarosa, este saco de sal, que es lo único que sale, oye, para lo único que sirve esta administración, es para tirarlo aquí en la misma calle a todo ello, para que derrita la nieve, por azaroso, es un saco de sal, coño, y no me disculpo, puesto de que no existen malas palabras, 
existe mala intención. La mala intención sí existe. O sea, que coño no es una mala palabra. Entonces, seguimos hablando. Entonces, quedaste derrotado. Quedaste derrotado porque hasta tu compañero de boleta, el señor BJ Torres, con el que yo casi nunca coincido, dijo que estaba en contra del festival. O sea, votaba en contra del festival porque no hay nada puesto, no hay una agenda puesta, en ningún momento, dime, ¿cuáles son cuáles son los parámetros? ¿Cómo que se va a regir esto? Nadie sabe de nada, ¿verdad? Pero, claro, tuvo que salir, porque tú sabes que yo, yo soy, yo soy, yo soy Morales, y yo quiero decir de que mi marido, Miguel Morales, el, lambonda, el lambonazo de, de Miguel Morales, que lo que vi el lambiéndole a Larry Catano, por cierto, es una nada mala palabra, pero si tú quieres cogerlo así, cógelo como te toca. Miguel Morales, que él viéndole a la Ricatano, y él viéndole a Helmin y vaina. Él, el que andaba en la Chevitajo, papi, deja que llegue el banner con la cara de Helmin. Deja que yo me junte con Helmin ahí en el círculo. A ti que él te gusta hacerle bullying a Maggie, Maggie González, ya, ya me sé el apellido, ya me lo dijeron esta tarde. Esa es otra, otra demanda también. HIPAA violation. Se va a tener. Claro que ella no va a votar en contra. Claro que no, porque su marido, su marido, que es supervisor, pues yo no sé qué trabajo es lo que él hace. ¿eh? Pero lo que vive andando, igual, bueno, una vaina. No te preocupes, mi amor. Estamos puestos para tu número ya. Entonces, aquí vino la siguiente fase de esa arquitectónica reunión del consejo municipal donde uno de los que estaban uno de los que habló se refirió al director de OIM el director de manejo de emergencia y van a la organización de manejo de, 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 la, de las emergencias que viene siendo el incompetente jefe interino de la policía la ricatano que by the way esto está aquí es la única persona en la historia de Puerto Amboy que yo no le tengo ningún tipo de respeto porque no vale un solo coño. Créeme. Y si quieres te puedes sentar conmigo. Hey Larry, you, you can come sit with me. And I will tell you face to face. You can bring your badge, you can bring your gun, you can shit, you can bring Nico too. You can bring Ralph Pineda, you can bring everybody. You can even bring Takashi Stilettos, it don't matter. And I will tell you why I got no respect for you. Yeah. The evidence will be in the room too. So to say, se puede sentar acá y yo le voy a decir por qué yo no tengo ningún tipo de respeto, porque él no se merece nada de respeto. Entonces, ¿qué pasa? Él es el que dictamina, ¿verdad? El que dice, mira, esto es lo que, esto es lo que se necesita para un festival, llámese el puertorriqueño, mexicano, cubano, dominicano, estas son las cosas. Porque él es quien maneja las cuestiones de emergencia. Entonces, ahí dijo uno de los, de los que estaba en el podio, Dijo, no, porque el director del OIM eh, nos, dio el clear, nos dio el clear para hacer el festival. Claro que le va del clear a ustedes. Porque ustedes tenían que decir que en ese momento que el director de OIM es el jefe interino que vive el ambiéndole donde el sol no alumbra, él me encaba para que lo haga jefe de la policía. No jefe interino, jefe de la policía. Y claro que él no se va a negar a eso porque si él se niega al festival dominicano, a eso tú le adhieres el rechazo, ¿verdad? La poca conexión que, que ha tenido esta administración con la comunidad. Papi, él jamás en su vida. Si ahora hay, qué sé yo, 100 posibilidades entre mil para que sea jefe. Él dice que no y él sabe que va. Se fue. ¿Me entiendes? Entonces, Helmen, es el problema. Que tú crees que todo el mundo es estúpido. Ustedes creen que la gente es ignorante, man. Entonces... ¿Por qué tú no te pronunciaste, por ejemplo, con el COVID-19, con los maestros? ¿Verdad? Muchos maestros. Señores, señores, si ustedes conocen a los presidentes de la Junta de Maestros, vamos, vamos de la Unión, vamos a sentarnos a hablar. Tenemos que tenemos que, que unirnos como comunidad y ver, canalizar. Coño, olvídense de Germín, olvídense del incompetente de, 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 de David Amador. Ese, ese carajo a la vela, yo creo que usted vea, yo creo que usted vea la carta que él mismo sometió a, 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 al, al periódico de aquí, una entrevista al periódico de aquí, de Lambo Guardian. Él mismo se hizo la maldita pregunta. 
Porque si él no se la hizo, ¿por qué, por qué, por qué dice que fue sometido por él? Esas son las cosas que usted tiene que prestar la atención. Henry, seguimos ahora, espérate. Entonces, ya quedamos que Larry Catano es la única persona que yo no respeto. Mire, eso significa que yo respeto a Miguel Morales. De una forma u otra. Sigue jodiendo, Miguelito. Sigue jodiendo con esa señora de Maggie. No solamente que vas a perder el poquito respeto que te tengo, Miguelito. Si tú crees que el festival da nota, más nota voy a dar yo en el círculo de la High Street, cayéndole atrás al incompetente del jefe tuyo por tu culpa. Si te veo montado en la Chevy Tao, prepárate también. O sea, porque es un circo donde ustedes son todos los payasos y los animales. Y yo soy el dueño. Voy a callar. Oh, llévate de mí, que todo se está poniendo bueno. Llévate de mí, coño. Aquí vamos a tirar coño. Aquí vamos a tirar de todo. Olvídate de esa vaina. ¿eh? Esto, 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 esto es el final. Y ahora, ¿quién podrá defendernos? Ya, ya el chavo está muerto. El Rey Leonidas. Y los 300 brechadores. Los 300 brechadores que siempre están activos conmigo. Un saludo muy especial. Seguimos hablando de prioridades, vengo ahora. So, anyways, guys, we're talking about priorities. Right? So, since we're talking about priorities, let's talk about the next one. Hold on a second. I want to make something clear. Uh, Mr. Helmut Kaba and his administration, look at this shit. Together we make a difference. Thank you for all your efforts and responsible with the stuff. You're so full of shit. Hey, you do this because you knew what was coming live. Helmet, helmet. You can't connect even with that bullshit of a of a video. You can't connect. Don't kid yourself. Anyway. So check this out. Uh Mr. Kaba did a did a little press release yesterday, a little post of the the available parking that we have in the city, right? But, Hellman, how the hell do you put out that information an hour, <clears throat> I'm sorry, an hour after the snow stopped? How you doing with that? Makes no, makes no sense. Everybody's already snowed in. All the cars are fully covered. Why didn't you do it before that? Days before, because we already knew about the storm days before. That's why it's called an advisory. Let's sell LeBron. There's a difference. You understand me? So anyway, then you go ahead and you do a little, a little live at six, which by the way, you were live for like six minutes, I heard. And, um, You guys didn't even know you were live. And Hellman, I think we went through this last year. We know your forte. I know. I know, hey, I know my limitations. Hey, I know I can. You think I could? I could outrun Nico, the the highly qualified civilian dog that we still have here, the canine. No. You think I can outwork? I don't know who. Well, I'm still thinking. Yeah, anyway. I outwork everybody in that administration. But, you know, I know my limitations. Perhaps my English is not as, as great, as proper, as eloquent. Perhaps my, my lexic is not as diverse, as profound as some of the people that are close to you. But I know this, and I work on it every day. You've been here for over a year. You can't fucking put two sentences together, Hellman. Hellman, every time you go live, Hellman, and I mean this with all the respect, Mr. Cobb, you make us look bad. You make us look bad for real. Do me a favor. You bring back the 15-minute boring-ass interview guy. And let him do the live. 
You understand me? You got Joel Rosa. You got, uh, what's her name? It's some more Payon, Payano, 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 because of you. You have her. Then you got the incompetent P.O. 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 Public Information Officer. That only proves that it doesn't matter how many fucking diplomas or certificates you have. You can still be inept and incompetent and not really know how to write to save your own life. You could put her, perhaps she could speak, you know, instead of you. Because I'll give you one thing. When you did that whole uh, OEM advisory, that wasn't an advisory. You advise pre, not post. You understand me, Helm? Damn it, Helmut. I said you advise first before shit hits the fair, not after. You understand me? Or a minute before is in advance. It's called an advisory. Like right now, like I'm advising you. This is an advisory. Mr. Helmut Kaba, King Leonidas, the beard, the sex symbol, the great awakening, the honey badger, the lone wolf. Big Papa Sexy himself is letting you know, I'm doing a recall on you. That's my advisory. And I don't give a shit about you and the people that are down with the Dominican Festival. Because I will not govern for the few. You understand me? I don't govern for the, for the goose. It's for the gander. Booyakasha. So anyway. And I got to give it to you because, you know, you got there. <laughs> Damn, but, and then you did this, and then you passed over freaking Larry, right? Captain Captain Kangaroo. Oh, oh and you made it a mission. You said this. You said, oh, uh, yes. Oh, no, wait. That's my lady. We're going to talk about my lady. Hold on a second. We got to talk about my lady. Miss ethics charges. Miss, no, you don't know what the hell you're doing. Anyway, so you got on there, right? And you said, "I want to. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna pass you over to uh, our OEM director, Larry Catano." And then you said, uh, "Also, our acting chief of police." And that's when, when Larry had an orgasm. <sighs> oh my God! Jesus Christ! He called me. He said, "Oh wait, hold on a second. He said, acting chief. Damn it! I want to be made chief. What the hell is it that I have to do? Anyway." And then you pass it over. And then you went over to Diane Roman. Diane. Be yourself, Diane. Speak the way you speak in Spanish. Don't pretend. Because it doesn't look, it doesn't seem genuine. And then you put some S's where they're not supposed to be. And you do this and you do that. <clears throat> if you're going to try to justify your job. You're doing a shitty job, a shitty job at it. Thank you. You are smart, though. I'll give you that. So anyways, we're talking about priorities. Hold on a second. You had all these days knowing that there was a storm coming. Right? And I want to send a shout out to the guys over at DPW. Listen, to, all, to my fellow Perth Amboyans that are part of Public Works. The badger, the lone wolf, the sex symbol, the guy with the beard, King Leonidas himself, has nothing but the utmost respect for you guys. And I know you guys do your job. But I also don't know, I also do know you guys, they make you look bad because the leadership, you know, there's, there's no vision there. You understand me? So I can't, there's certain things that went wrong. Certain side streets. I got a lot of freaking calls this morning about side streets not being done and what have you. Hey, if there's anything you know about me, is uh, I go I goes downtown. Oh, yeah. Just to check out if McClellan, if Madison, if that, all the side streets are cleaned. Sick freak. Anyway. And, um, you know, you guys did a decent job. I think you could have done a better job. There's always room for improvement. We just got to get the right leadership. You understand me? It's like the police patrol, like the patrol unit. 
once at Rico Helm and once we come in, oh, you, you're going to see a lot of police presence. And not for a hot cocoa with a cop bullshit uh, 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 activity, right? The only time you get to see a cop is when they try to politic over here. And Larry signs off on it because he wants to look good for, for, for Helm because he wants to be main chief. Um, Instead of you going to the city council to lobby and defend United Dominican Super Tamboy, Udopa, which is actually, you know, because that, that, that's, that's a real Dominican thing. We copy. Because it's actually the spinoff to Adopa, Asociación Dominicana de Super Tamboy. Hey, don't worry about it. I got friends in Udopa, too. Instead of you doing that, Wednesday, how come you didn't go live and start telling people instead of you putting out, you know, where the parking spots were for the city where you could go and park? How about how about you? You went live on Wednesday, right? Instead of politicking and looking sorry and pitiful and just weak as hell. How about you would have done a live and you would have said, hey, because, you know, these are the solutions to the other guy. We're going to get to you. Later on, I would have done this. Uh, how you doing, people of Perth Amber? You know, this is what you like, Helmy. You like it. It's your proud mayor, people of Perth Amber. I would have done all of, all of that and shit. And then I would have said, listen, if you're parked in these streets, like Amboy Avenue, the main, the main streets, the county roads, please try and find alternate parking because the tow truck's going to be coming. You understand me? And then I would read the whole list of, of uh, streets, which, by the way, Brighton, Brighton, it's not included. I don't know why the hell. Larry, I don't pay you for this shit. You understand me? And now, mama, and now this lady, Marisol, just, just reminded me something, reminded me of something. To my people over at DPW, when you're cleaning the downtown area, Smith Street, when you see... We need accessibility for the handicap. You understand me? Right now, my mother's in a position where she's not handicapped, thank God. But, you know, you have to make the corners accessible. How the hell can you get through with a wheelchair? You understand me? Food for thought. Food for thought. Something happens. Someone falls there. Guess who's liable? We all are. There you go, buddy. Anyway, so check this out. So I would address the people like this, and I'd have, I'd have a number, maybe two numbers, and I would be live streaming. And that's what we. This is what you guys need to write down. I'm not going to delete this, this, this live. This is what you will see in the next administration. When the shit hit the fan, hits the fan, we're gonna be there 48, 24 hours before advising, not warning the celebrant, incompetent public information officer, inept, can't even write for shit. Anyway, we're going to be live. and we, We're going to be taking calls. Hey, where you live at? Well, I'm here around um, Johnston, Johnston and Penn Street. Okay, so what's the problem, sir? Well, you know, we can't, we can't park on this side of the street. Where can I park? Well, you can park on this side. What's going on? Oh, electricity went out, power went out. Which, by the way, hold on a second. What the hell is traffic doing? Because I almost got hit. I almost got hit coming um, up High Street to turn on, 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 on Smith Street. And that light at the corner of High and Smith is not working. The guy just blew past it. Get your shit together, Helmet. Get it together. And tell uh, Miguelito Hinarte, whatever the hell his name is, go check that out. You understand me? Anyway, so this is what you guys have to expect. These are priorities, Helmet. I don't give a shit about a festival. How can, how can Juancito, Carlita, Robert, Bob, or Steve get to enjoy the festival that you're lobbying for if they got hit by a car? Because the traffic light is not functioning. Because, you know, maybe Steve was pushing the wheelchair because his mother, you know, for some reason, 
can't walk, and he busted his ass and broke his leg. How can Steve make it to the to the festival to El Festival Dominicano, my friend? It's called fucking common sense, homie. Excuse the x the f bombs. I'm not apologizing. Just excuse me. So you know, we're t- we're still talking about priorities, but we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about ethics charges. We're gonna talk about <laughs> no, that's that's not what we're gonna talk about. No, I have a runny nose. No, I don't do drugs. I don't do none of that. We're gonna talk about this one. Yes, the incompetent councilwoman, Milady Tejeda Tejada. We gonna talk about you. Oh, stick around. Entonces, mi gente, como estamos hablando de prioridades, de la prioridad, ¿verdad? Tenemos que hablar de lo siguiente. Un saludo muy especial a toda la gente que trabaja ahí en obras públicas. Entiendo que nuestros trabajadores de obras públicas tratan de hacer el mejor trabajo posible. Pero claro, tú puedes tener un equipo estelar. Tú puedes tener a Kobe Bryant, a LeBron James, a Steve Curry, a Michael Jordan, a Scott. Tú puedes tener lo mejor de lo mejor. Pero si el coach, papi, si quien dirige, si la directiva no tiene tacto, no tiene sentido común, no tiene liderazgo, eso lo único es un fracaso, es un fracaso. Lo único que es un fracaso. Entonces, a los muchachos de obra pública, entiendo que hicieron lo mejor. Siempre, siempre hay espacio para mejorar. Claro está, allá estaban politicando, ahí yo vi que el, 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 el director interino montado y que con Gemin, porque Gemin es una vaina ahora. Gemin ahora le dice Mr. Light, ¿y qué es lo que está pasando? Gemin, por favor, papi, deja el live. Oye, yo entiendo mis limitantes. Sé que quizás, bueno, yo sé que yo hablo mejor que tú hasta en inglés, pero yo sé que quizás no, no haga más lagartijas que tú. Físicamente, quizás tú, tú me rompes a mí en vaina de deporte, lo que tú quieras. Yo conozco eso, yo te la doy. Pero, papi, cada vez que tú hablas, cuando tú no puedes poner dos oraciones, o sea, cuando tú no puedes articular, cuando tú no puedes llevar un mensaje claro, cuando tú mismo te pierdes, en una calle de una sola vía, o sea, tú te pierdes en una calle de una sola vía, papi, hey, hey, nosotros estamos pasando vergüenza, hey, deja la vaina, hey, deja esa vaina, para eso no es que tú le pagas a Alicia Lebron, para eso no es que le pagamos a Alicia Lebron, al incompetente del Public Information Officer que tú tienes ahí, que no sabe ni escribir, por lo menos que hable, déjala que hable, ¿Eh? pon a otra persona a hablar, porque tú tienes más de un año ahí y no me digas a mí que tú no has tenido suficiente tiempo como para tener un coach. Coño, hasta yo te enseño, papi. Porque esto es para edificar, esto no es para destruirte, man. Porque cuando llegó Wilda, hey, cuando llegó Baby Girl, Baby Girl no era como que era, no era tampoco como que ya, una, qué sé yo, una oradora abismal, una vaina, un exponente, una vaina. No. Pero tú te das cuenta que ella fue mejorando, viejo. Coño, tú tienes más de un año ahí. Entonces, Helme, la marmota sale para anunciar la primavera, si llega temprano, llega tal. Helme, tú no saliste el año pasado, saliste ahora para pa anunciar que tú quieres el Festival Dominicano. Encima de eso, Helme, en medio del pico de la pandemia, Helme, tú te fuiste de vacaciones. Yo tengo el Opra. Te fuiste el 27. Cuando Wilda Díaz, cuando pasó la pandemia, que yo tenga conocimiento, por la única razón que ella salió de, de Puerto Amboy, fue porque en paz descanse su padre, fue para enterrar a su padre en Puerto Rico, valga la redundancia. Tú me entiendes, papi, que tú no tienes tacto. Tú, tú me entiendes a mí, que usted no tiene tacto, que usted no tiene ni un coño, usted no tiene ni un horizonte, usted no tiene ni un norte. ¿eh? Por eso es que esta ciudad está como está, man. Pero eso es lo que venimos a cambiar, papi. Uno a uno. Hey, todos los días se despierta una persona. Todos los días una persona aprende. Una más. Y recuerda que te lo dice Rey Leonidas con los 300 brechadores, papi. El equipo táctico 
llévate de lo que te estoy diciendo. El equipo está... Yo tengo información de ustedes que ustedes no se imaginan. Ustedes tiemblan. Si llegan a saber lo que yo tengo. Pero recuerda que mi mejor aliado es el tiempo, gente. Mi mejor aliado. Al principio, cuando yo empecé el live, el todo el mundo decía, coño, este tipo está loquísimo. Wow, pero el tipo está diciendo la vaina. Pa. Y fueron lleg llegando personas, sumándose más personas. Fui haciendo conexiones y cosas. Y fulano, ¿y está pasando esto? Me, a mí me mandaron esta foto tuya un día que tú estabas en un sitio, así que repartiendo una caja. Por cierto, ¿dónde está la caja de comida, gente? Porque aparentemente el festival es muy importante, que una caja de comida, pa, por ejemplo, para nuestros hermanos que están ilegalmente en este país, que no recibieron un solo premio, un solo, un solo, bueno, sí, un premio, un boleto, un fracatán, una rifa premiada, y un chequecito de 300 dólares a la semana. ¿Eh? Con todo este dinero que llegó el año pasado, en mayo, 8.2, yo creo que fue lo que llegaron, millones de dólares. ¿Dónde está ese dinero, papi? Aparte del que queda, el restante, los 6 millones y pico, ¿dónde están, Germán? Germán, yo quiero que tú sepas que yo estoy, yo estoy pendiente de ese presupuesto, papi. Prepárate con la que se va al mar contigo. Si ese presupuesto viene como yo me imagino. El circo de los hermanos va a que te va a quedar pequeño, papi. Recuerda que yo soy dueño del circo. Y esta administración liderada por ti son los animales y son los payasos que van a estar bailando ahí. Estamos claros. Eh? Entonces, give me a second, guys. Vamos a hablar de una cosa. Hablé que Villa y Torres, principalmente, déjame, déjame, déjame darle un, un, un saludo a Joel Pavón. Joel Pavón, el, el concejal. Coño, hasta Bill Patrick. Eh, hasta Villa y Torres. Pero yo el pavón, yo el pavón se plantó ahí. Trataron de amedrentar. Fue allá un grupo y vaina a hablar en del Festival Dominicano. Y que si la, ustedes tienen que ir. Oye, a ti mexicano, a ti peruano, costarricense, haitiano, cubano, colombiano, venezolano, ecuatoriano, argentino. ¿Sabes una cosa? Tienes que prestar mucha atención a la reunión del Consejo Municipal. No me gusta el sentido del humor de esa gente, gente burda, gente tosca. Y se paran allá a planificar, a pasar ordenanzas que lo único que hace es premiar a los demás de ese anillo de, de ineptos e incompetentes. Tenéis que prestarle atención, hermano. Es una aberración de la naturaleza. Helmen, no puede hacer eso, Helmen. Ninguno de ustedes puede hacer eso, Helmen. Ya me atendí. Entonces, a ti, parcero, a vos que me escuchas, Oscar, preste atención, hermano. Le están vendiendo el, el parche, hombre. Y usted ni cuenta se da. Lo están poniendo a cargar tierra política con el pecho y ni cuenta se ha dado mío. Preste atención. Está agitando boletas allá y usted ni en los centros de espiritistas. Yo pues, ya ese de mí. Oye, ese de verdad. Se están pasando. Oye, pana que se pasó de fan, ¿viste? Tiene que prestarle atención a esa, esa, esa reunión del Consejo Municipal. Están loguitos por, por tumbar el cartado y ponerle el pumpkin que aquí en Amboy. ¿Me entiende? Entonces, hacer no se puede hacer nada de eso. Oye, y más con esto Dominican, ¿me entiendes? Con esta cuestión de que del Dominican Festival, no entiendo, bro, porque, papi, vamos a bajar para la calle 8, allá en Miami. Bueno, vaya. Ustedes tienen que prestar atención, porque yo no creo que las demás comunidades están siendo representadas. Entonces, muchos saludos al concejal Pavón. Coño, demostraste, man, de verdad. Mira, yo me sentí tan orgulloso que yo quería meterme por el, por el, por, por la cámara, por la vaina, eh, si darle un, darle un apretón, un abrazo y se le coño. Usted es un líder. Así es que te tiene que comportar, papi. Siempre. Y te van a llevar, no, porque si este grupito fueron como algunos 15 o 20, te van a llevar como 50 ya. Mucho cuidadito con flaquear. Mucho cuidadito. 
Eso es lo que tengo que decir aparte de eso. Entonces, vamos a hablar de Milady Tejada, porque Milady Tejada es parte del comité de la organización del Festival Dominicano. Vamos a hablar de lo que son los cargos éticos. Milady Tejada, siendo, a eso se le dice habitual offender. A mí me encanta cómo suena en, en, en anglosajón, en inglés, English. Habitual offender. Eso es lo que es la señora Milady Tejada. Tejada, qué sé yo. La incompetente. Eh, concejal. Se veía muy inepta para eso. Ya no, ya no sirve en eso, ¿eh? Que se, que se mete en otra vaina, que siga ahí en la Fátima, sea lo que sea, menos eso. ¿eh? Óyeme, déjame decirte algo. Ella, hay una historia con ella en la Junta Escolar, ¿verdad? 184 mil dólares que se le pagó, que ella votó también. Ella sabe que votó para darle 184 mil, 184 mil la, 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 dólares, más comprar una casa, o sea, había que mudar también a la superintendente del distrito escolar de aquel entonces, a la señora Capri, porque ella agarró y le armó un expediente a todo ello, ético. Ella votó, entonces ella va a venir y te va a decir esto porque tú sabes que ella. Va... Hold on a second, we got some lady. Trust me, it's going to get good. It'll sound better in English. Believe me. Ella va a venir y te va a decir. Sí. Yes. Yeah. Óyeme, mi amor, cuando tú le preguntes a ella, oh, que lo cargo ético te va a decir, no, pero a mí el abogado, la abogada me dijo que yo podía votar, oh, sí, en aquella ocasión, pero mi amor, pero la, la historia se repitió y tú, y tú sabías que tú no podías votar, que tú no podías abrir la boca, ¿eh? que tú no hablas como ciudadana, porque tú estás sentada ahí, como parte del órgano legislador de nuestra ciudad. Tú eres la, la concejal. Entonces, a eso se le dice conflicto de intereses y es antiético el que tú votes sobre un tema que se relaciona a una organización de la cual tú eres parte, porque eso también puede caer en el tráfico de influencia, mi amor. Tú sabes, porque lo que pasa es que ustedes creen, sí, ustedes, todos ustedes creen, como que todo el mundo aquí es ignorante, es estúpido, man. Yo estoy loco por ver qué es lo que va a decir el Attorney General's Office sobre esto. Oh, y ella le preguntó. Ella va a decir, no, pero yo le pregunté a, a, al abogado, pero pero fenómeno de la naturaleza, pero lo mismo te pasó la otra vez. ¿Y tú viste lo que sucedió? ¿Eh? Señores, ese es el estirpe, ese es el linaje, esa es la casta, ¿eh? esa es la raza que tenemos ahí de representantes ahí en el Consejo Municipal. Vamos a ver lo que voy a decir. Oye, porque ahí hay cargo ético. Yo creo que ya de aquí a par de meses ya se jodió mi lado y mi lado no va a poder correr ni para ni pa concejal. Llévate de mí. No te lleves lo que te dicen los dominicanos que están del lado tuyo, mi lado. Llévate de mí. Que yo siempre digo las cosas como son. Yo se la doy al que se la tengo que dar y se la quito al que no la, al que no la tiene. Voy a callar. Prepárate que estoy para ti. Vuelvo ahora. So, guys, hold on a second. Damn it, I said hold on a second. Yes. Yes. Yeah, oh, shut up. Shut up, lady. Yes, yes. Yes, all you said is yes. Hold on a second. This is her. Oh, you got to wear your mask because COVID-19. Oh. And all that shit went down the drain this Wednesday. Milady Tejeda, Miss Ethics violation, Miss Ethics charges. Milady Tejeda, part of that little group with Obi, Obdulio Gonzalez, the other one, Samuel LeBron, whatever the hell his name is, the other one, Al Alvarez, Al 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 Al
Milady Tejedo, the one that voted to pay prior uh, uh, schools admit uh, superintendent Caffrey a hundred and eighty four thousand dollars, and I think that was if I if if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's a violation of the of the sunshine sunshine law because how can you how can you start a meeting right like around seven six and at night in the afternoon and end the meeting the following day at about one o'clock in the morning where the hell is everybody at that time everybody's sleeping right so you know 184 dollars and plus they had to buy her a house you know but we're going we're going we're going to upload those papers so you could so you could get to see what I what I'm talking about. Now, check this one out. Milady Tejeda said, "Well, yeah. Yeah. The lawyer advised me that I could the, I asked the lawyer, she said I could vote or he said I could vote. That's why I voted. Okay. You know how history repeated itself Wednesday by having her being part of the debacle over here at city council where she actually she actually went on record talking about that you know about the dominican festival and that she voted she even asked the opo apple whatever the hell his name is macintosh i don't know and even though he told her she could or whatever it was she knew from prior experience that she couldn't you cannot vote if you're in a position of power, right? When you when your vote can benefit a company, a group in which you're part of, you have to abstain. You have to shut up. You have to know your role and shut your mouth. But no, you went and you ran your mouth the same way Helmet ran his mouth, bitching, moaning, whining, and complaining because he wanted the Dominican Festival. And you were part of the uh, United Dominicans Committee. You couldn't. So, you know, word word got to me that somebody is looking into uh, the AG's office. So let's see how that cookie's going to crumble now. Miss Milady. So, Miss Milady, hold on a second, because we're talking about priorities, and I think you were very hypocritical. I think you're a hypocrite. Because all this time, you would you you would talk about during during the meetings, guys, wear your mask, COVID nineteen. Yeah, but you forgot about COVID nineteen defending the Dominican festival. Why 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 is that? Huh? So so now you don't now. So when you put five thousand people, what tells you five thousand people are going to keep social distance? Again, I'm not against the, the, the Dominican festival, Puerto Rican festival. I, I don't care about that. But, you know, I call it the way I see it. So, milady, chances are you might not even you might not even be able to run for meter mate after this. Because there's some angry people. Oh, there's some angry people. But, you know, it's like I always say, to me, it ain't personal. But some people actually took it personal, milady. Especially when you think of your Mother Teresa and shit over there at the city council. It ain't happening. It ain't happening. It ain't never happening. So you better tell you better tell your cousin, your cousin Helman. Hey, he gotta be ready. As a matter of fact, you lucky your city's up. Cause if not, I would have recalled your ass just based on that. You would have been part of the recall. This is insane. So now, guys, hold on a second. Hold on a second. We still going. We still got 10 more minutes on the clock, and I mean 10 more minutes. This is the, we're in the eighth period, about to leave. So anyway, let's talk about priorities. So these are the priorities, you know. All year long, Helmut Cava doesn't show face. Hold on a second, because we're talking about priorities. The same lady, my lady Tejeda, Yes. Well, I like to take a chance. It's actually on record. I like to take this opportunity to uh, thank this new administration for 
for getting us that uh, $15 million of federal money, which is all bullshit because I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about because, you know, I'm just as ignorant as this guy that just came in because he ain't do shit because all of that is federal money coming to every, every city in the state of New Jersey and elsewhere. Yeah. So anyway, now that we're talking about priorities, for a whole year, uh, oh, look at this. Hold on a second. For a whole year, Helmet hasn't shown face. For a whole year, again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to finish with this one. For a whole year, you know, we've had COVID-19. Supposedly, we have a, a bullshit COVID-19 task force that they ain't never do shit. Anyway, uh, there's, no, there's no food. Food is not being uh, uh, distributed to the community unless it's by the different uh, pa- uh, food pantries here which there's one that I'm proud of, the Mercy House. I'm always there. By the way, it was, hey, guys, not for nothing. It was 12 Fahrenheit two weeks ago, 12 Fahrenheit. It must have felt like three degrees Fahrenheit. And we were there unloading the living daylights out of that truck. Jesus Christ. How how come you didn't send anybody home? How come you didn't come yourself? Because you're fit. You know, I'm the one that's overweight, helmet. Um, I make no excuses. I will never ask anything of you that I cannot myself do. You understand me, Helmet? It's called accountability. Anyways, so for a year and some change, Helmet hasn't shown face. Not during, uh, let me see, the whole bicycle incident, which, by the way, they even took Emma's, uh, Emma, Emma's, Emma's name, right? From the, re- from the little bullshit ceremony that they did at the, at the council meeting. The reason why they do that, they did that was because they knew they were in big shit, especially B.J. Torres. Sorry, excuse me for councilman, better known as The Walking Dead, Full Manchu, Mr. Woodstock, Dusty, Rose Morales. Rose Morales is like this light, bro. Like, Rose Morales is like this light, and I'm like, uh, you know, with my phone and, 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 and me trying to be like Miguel Morales, although I'm way smarter than him, you know, I could switch it. You know what I'm saying? That's, she does whatever Miguel tells her to do, right? She can't think for herself. She's incompetent and inept as hell. Anyway, you couldn't show face. Storm hit last year. You were not prepared. Hold on a second. By the way, I'm looking at the Honey Badgers Bridge on 35 across the street from ShopRite. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody cleaning that up. So, how about you guys link the incompetent story excuse of Assemblywoman, the Assemblywoman that doesn't give a shit and has never done shit for the city, to make a couple of phone calls and have my bridge cleaned, cleared for the elderly that are always crossing. Thank you. Helmet, T. That's what I'm talking about, Helmet. Helmet, tell Matthew Nieves to send, to send uh, the incompetent Larry Catano, Mr. Dingleberries, an email, and for him as the OEM director to notify the state that they have 24 to 48 hours to clean that bridge. If not, we will clean it ourselves, and we will bill you the hourly rate. That, Hellman, is responsibility. That is leadership. That is having the, um, uh, the testicular fortitude and the knowledge on how to lead, which, by the way, you have nothing on that. Anyway, so now, we, we spoke about Honey Badger's Bridge. Hold on a second. Hey. Eight million dollars came in. We spent over a million dollars with the new water meters. I never forget about the guy on West High Avenue that the meter was tampered with. I will never forget about that. Hey, we might just open up a case on that. You think I forget? I'm like the elephant in the room, dude. Everybody sees me. Everybody sees the beard. It's not me. They fear, they fear the beard. They fear the knowledge. They fear the way I articulate, the way my, 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 thought, my thought process. Hellman, your administration is full of shit, but hold on. I'm, st- I'm still proving you wrong. So check this out. But meanwhile, shit is hitting the fan all over the city. Catalytic converters being stolen. Houses being trying, you know, people trying to break into houses and shit. Thank God for, for rain. Um, what else? We got we got a guy that got killed over here at home. Uh, what is it? Uh, Harbor Town. 
We got a guy that was found dead. We got all of this, all of this crap. And how many is all worried about having a $4,000 chair? Painting the office. That's the only thing he's worried about. Hellman, you know. Priorities, Hellman. Priorities. It's the only thing I'm asking. So now I wonder if something's going to change, Hellman. Hellman, are you going to be doing, are you going to tell your boy Jose Yespaya, because I mentioned name, you know, you gave him that little bullshit title, Hellman. The guy that was actually one that that was paid by your campaign, he was part of your campaign. He was paid, and then you give him a little job, you know. And I was thinking, you give him a job at Kabowski Community Center, where nepotism thrives. You know, you got elderly people, you got people walking in there. So I have a question, and it's just a question. I'm not, you know, it's not affirmative. Is she there to uh, make a list, or you know? register certain voters or, you know, entice certain people to vote a certain way? This is just questions. I'm not a, it's, it's not an allegation. You could take me to court if you want. Anyway, yeah. Oh, trust me. Big shout outs to uh, the Democratic Organization. What a piece of trash have you turned that shit into? Let me tell you something. The county Democrats should be ashamed, ashamed, should be saddened, should be upset, should be just embarrassed. Hey, by the way, big shout out to, to, to the new lawyer over there. On what side of the history is the Democratic Party or birthday boy organization going to be on? On the same side it's always been on. Ever since Hellman took over on the bullshit side. If not, you could ask the sorriest excuse of a councilman to ever sit at council chambers. The guy, hey, he knows who Wonder Woman is. Shit, you know, the one that thought that she was Aquaman. You can ask her that. Anyway, so Helmet, we spoke about priorities tonight. Can you do this, Helmet? Can you guys do all of this? Eh? You guys can't even pull up a two-minute live. And let me tell you something, because I never forget and I go after everybody not that fun. And I don't think I just want to congratulate everybody. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Anyways, that'll be all for today, guys. You know, Vinny Vinny Beach, we can't be so we conquered. <laughs> Do me a favor, and I mean this. Don't wait around for anybody to do anything for you. Don't wait don't wait around for anyone to to take the initiative. Let me tell you why. Cuz if you're waiting for a great leader to take the initiative, if you're waiting to be led and it just so happens you're being led by the incompetent one, I I feel sorry for you. You're incompetent as hell too. So do me a favor, wear a pair. And if you don't have a pair, hey, you can call me. I'll lend you I'll lend you some of mine. Until next time, folks. Jelly Ben. Ben here and Jelly Ben been gone. So let me address the people. Oh, and before I forget, hold on a second. Before I forget, you guys got to be real careful because they're trying to, they're trying to bring this bus. They're trying to do like a bus, like a, like a bus uh, business here in Perth Down, boy. And they're trying to give some permits to parks. Uh, I don't know how many buses by Brook Avenue, which, by the way, there is no parking space over there. And that's the reason why some people didn't make it to certain boards, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Don't you ever think you're going to take me for a ride, sucker. So I'll see you Sunday, and we will be talking about that uh, that bus terminal or whatever it is they want to bring in there. Just mi gente. Ya para eso me para terminar. Deme recuidar y le algo. Ya no, vamos a hablar bien. En más de un año que lleva el incompetente de Germán Cabay, aparte de los hechos de violento, los, los, los atracos, porque sí se han atracado personas acá, que por cierto, yo soy el primero en decir que Germán no, no, si fuera por Germán, Germán no pasaría nada de esto, no porque él es alcalde, sino porque Germán no es mala persona. Eso lo digo de verdad, de corazón. Aunque él me tiene un odio, pero no importa. Me vas a amar, papi. 
en más de un año, el mamotrejo que tenemos aquí de, de, de administración, liderado por, por el incompetente de Germán Cava, nunca ese, ese pseudo líder ha, ha, ha aparecido ni en los centros espiritistas, ¿verdad? Solamente apareció ahí en la iglesia, de que con Mayfe, con esta gente para politiquear. Eh, en más de un año nunca ha dado la cara a la comunidad, nunca rindió cuenta el estado de cuenta, nunca dio el estado de cuenta de la comunidad. En más de un año, mira lo que pasó el año pasado, valga la redundancia, con, con la tormenta de nieve, poca la preparación, poco el tacto. Los muchachos de obra pública pueden hacer maravilla, pero si no tienen el, 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 el liderazgo adecuado, la persona que tenga los tecnicismos, el conocimiento, la, el, el, el suficiente sentido común, no es mucho lo que pueden hacer. Entonces recuerden que dentro de este año, mientras recogimos, o más bien recibimos, más de 8 millones de dólares, que la señora Milady Tejada, que no tiene nada de ética, ¿eh? Porque ella el año pasado se la pasó, que usted tiene que cuidarse porque es COVID-19, y que un sinnúmero de vainas, óyeme. Eh, Girasol Buldiel, eh, si no me equivoco, van a abrir mañana. Si no, llamen llamen a... ¿Sabes qué? Yo lo voy a poner después que termine el live, si van a abrir mañana. Um, pero yo creo que sí que abren mañana. ¿Qué sucede? A todo esto, el problema aquí es que no se ha priorizado las cosas vitales, las cosas de importancia. Porque se le ha puesto más ímpetu, más importancia, valga la redundancia, a las cosas banales, por ejemplo, una maldita silla de que de cuatro mil dólares, cuando ni las sillas que están en la casa cuestan cuatro mil dólares. En ningún momento te han dado la cara, en ningún momento han defendido a los niños ante, ante, ante el incompetente del superintendente. Mira lo que pasó en la, en la escuela los otros días que se reventó la tubería. O sea, estas son las cosas que ustedes tienen que prestarle atención. Y tú dirás, no, pero que le alcalde, sí, pero eh, las escuelas, ¿dónde están? En Woodbridge, no están aquí en Puerto Amboy. Los niños que asisten ahí, ¿son de Woodbridge? No, son de Puerto Amboy. Entonces, si tú, no, si tú no cuidas el presente y el futuro, que son los niños, no estás en nada. Más importante es una silla de cuatro mil dólares. Más, oh, más importante es un festival. Cuando el mismo alcalde, Jaime Cava, Dijo que aquí, en esa parada de que de, de Navidad, que fue una porquería, de que, que había miles de personas. Ahí no había más de mil personas. Ahí no llegaba ni a 300 personas, papi. ¿Oíste? Entonces, esa, 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 esa excusa barata, esa justificación, lo único que te hacen ver pésimo. Así que recuerda. Um, cada vez que tú hablas, cada vez que tú haces un lado y tú dices, mi gente, soy yo, ella y Caide, de aquí, de Pais and Boy, nos hace ver mal. Esto yo te lo digo de corazón. Practica un poquito la, en, un poquito la lingüística en, tu, en el pronunciamiento, no solamente en castellano, no solamente en inglés, sino también en, en, en inglés. Esto, esto ya es crítica constructiva. Y por favor, no me haga pasar vergüenza. Es lo único que te digo, porque cuando hablan de ti, dije que es el alcalde dominicano. Y saben que yo soy dominicano. Una vez que yo soy igual que tú. Señores, Jelly, bien, 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 Jelly, bien, bien, bien. Si ustedes tienen preguntas, 732-900-9945. Envíen sus preguntas ahí. Hagan bien y no miren a quién. No esperen nada de nadie. No esperen por otra persona para tomar la iniciativa. No esperen que otros hagan un cambio. Todo empieza por uno. Que papá Dios nos agarre bien bendecido, bien confesado, y que me los bendiga a todos. Bye. Nos vemos el domingo. Y vamos a hablar de ese terminal de buses que quieren poner aquí. Quieren estacionar buses. Están buscando permiso por ahí, por Brook Avenue, donde no hay 
donde no hay estacionamiento, quieren permiso de estacionamiento para meter autobuses allá. Por eso fue que algunas personas se quedaron fuera de, 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 de ciertos boards que estaban ahí, de ciertos comités de la ciudad. El domingo yo le traigo toda la información, señores, que Dios me lo bendiga, cuídense. Voy a callar.